Welcome back friends. Let us continue with the remaining part of the North America. What we have studied in the previous lecture is the, is the Western Cordilleras or the Rocky Mountain system of the North America. Now let us come to the central part. What we have already done that this entire part is the mountainous region. What is the mountain here? To the south it is the Alaska range. Which highest peak lies in the Alaska range? It is Mount Whitney. This is the Brooks range. And then here we have the Cordillera or the Rocky Cordillera, a series of different mountains which then continues as the Coast Range, Cascade Range, etc. We have the Columbia Plateau, the Great Plains, yeah, sorry, the Inland Drainage System, that is the Great Basin, and we have the Colorado Plateau region which includes the Death Valley, etc. Now let us come and study the central lowlands of the North America. The central lowlands of the North America again can be divided into the central lowlands of USA and the central lowlands of Canada region. The central lowlands of USA and the central lowlands of Canada. Now this, the central lowland is in, lies in the central part and in the Canadian region versus the USA region. How does it differ? We will see that in the Canadian region, now you can see in the atlas, the central lowland, the central part in the Canada is made up of numerous different lakes. So the central lowlands in Canada, the central lowlands, is an example of an outwash plain in Canada. Outwash plains in the north. Outwash plains in the north means which kind of a topography? Outwash plains are the part of which topography? This is an example of an glaciated topography. This is an example of a glaciated topography. is an example of a outwash plains in the north is an example of an glaciated topography and because as yes, we have studied in the glaciated topography lecture that in any glaciated topography there will be what there will be presence of numerous lakes because if you remember the glaciated regions are stratified or scratched regions and in this region there will be numerous lakes and therefore there are some of the lakes, important lakes which you should remember from the preliminary examination point of view are the Great Lakes of North America and the Great Lakes of, that is the lakes of Canada and the Great Lakes of the North America region. Why the North America region? Because the Great Lakes are shared by both USA and Canada. Now what are these lakes? From the north to south, there are the, some important lakes are, what is the name of the first lake here? This is the, I will mark it as one. The first lake is Great Bear Lake. Great Bear Lake. Which country? It lies in Canada. Then the second lake which is here is the, you can see it is a Great Slave Lake. The second lake which is present is the Great Slave Lake. It is a Great Slave Lake. Don't do all the lakes. Now come directly, leave the lake, leave the lake, Athabasca, etc. Then the lake is the Reindeer Lake. You can remember if you want to remember, you just go through it. If it will strike in the examination, don't worry, just ek ya do bar keep on revising it. Revise it three times, then it will strike in the examination. For example, Great Bear Lake, if I say, remember Canada, Slave Lake, Canada, Reindeer Lake, Canada. How to remember it? Let us first remember the lakes here. Reindeer Lake. Then the other important lake is Lake Winnipeg. If you find here, there is one lake which is here, that is the Lake Winnipeg. Fourth lake is Lake Winnipeg. Winnipeg. 
and the fifth lake which is fine which is which you will find form here which you will find here is the lake Winnipegosis. the fifth lake which you will find here is the lake Winnipegosis. now what is one more thing you should remember there is the one river which is flowing into the lake Winnipegosis. what is the name of that river you can see there there is one river which is draining here that is the river such kates one which river river sas catch one flows into the Winnipegosis. river Saskatchewan flows into the river into the lake Winnipegosis. Now how to remember if I ask you where is the if the UPSC will ask you where is the Great Bear Lake located how to remember the country Canada. Now bears are formed in the northern hemisphere north pole so Great Bear Lake in the near the north pole that is the northernmost lake of the Canada. We humans make bear as our slaves for for entertainment for the dance show so bear lake ke niche slave lake reindeer lake kaha pe hai? again reindeer is an animal uh, reindeer draws the or we can say reindeer pulls the cart of a santa claus so reindeer lake again in the northern part that is canada mein. winnipeg winnipegosis winnipegosis how to remember winnipegosis mein river saskets one flows so s i s S A S, Winnipegosis, Saskatchewan. Is it not rhyming? Sis Sas. So Winnipegosis may river Saskatchewan flows. For general studies, this is more than enough. We are, in fact, we are doing more than enough. We are preparing for the worst, for the most difficult of the questions. So Great Bear Lake, Great Slave Lake, Reindeer Lake, Lake Winnipeg, Lake Winnipegosis. Winnipegosis may river Saskatchewan flows. Now what is more important in this is the Great Lakes of North America. Now there are three, there are five important lakes of the North America and these lakes are, can you tell me the name of these lakes? These lakes are, you can see in the atlas here. That is, this region of the North America is made up of five great lakes. And these lakes are Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie and Ontario. So can you find Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie and Ontario. So the five lakes of North America. Now what are these five lakes? Are they an example of a... What will what are this? This are also an example of the Great Lakes re, are also an example of an glaciated lakes. So the Great Lakes is also an example of glacial origin. These are also of a glacial origin. These are also of a glacial origin. Now you can see how these Great Lakes are. Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario and Lake Ontario. So these are the great lakes of the North America. This is the Lake Superior. This is the Lake Michigan. This is Lake Huron. This is Lake Erie. And this is Lake Ontario. Lake Ontario. 
Now, how to remember this? This lakes are in the form of homes. H O M E S. This is the shortcut to remember the lakes. H O M E S. But this is not the order. The order, if I ask you from west to east, it is from west to east. How is the order? It is S. It is superior. Superior ke baad, what are the, this great lakes? Michigan. S M H E O. This is from west to east, is it? It is S M H E O. Superior Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario. Superior Michigan, Huron, Erie, and Ontario. But if I ask you, okay, fine, which is the largest of all the Great Lakes? From the name itself, you can say superior. The name has been given superior lake, superior because it is the largest of all the Great Lakes. So size-wise, size-wise, the Great Lakes are largest is Lake Superior. Uske baad, how to remember the size? Just interchange M with H. H with M here. So, just interchange, it becomes S H M E O. So, the largest superior, uske baad it is Mich Huron, uske baad it is Michigan, Erie and Ontario. But as per the west to east, it is S M H E O. So, just have a brief idea of the Great Lakes, S M H E O, and then size wise, Interchange the place between M and H, it becomes S H M E O. These are the Great Lakes region of North America. Now, after this, not only this Great Lakes region, it is one of the this this region is one of the rich region in natural resource. Now, if I if I ask you how this Great Lakes region is. Now, this Great Lakes region is also industrially one of the most developed region of North America. Why? Because this region of North America, I have rubbed the North America map, but you can refer into the atlas. You see, this region of North America surrounding the Great Lakes region, surrounding this region is known as a New England region. It is rich in minerals. It is rich in, you can see water resource, it is rich in water resource. Great Lakes region, the Great Lakes are not at a great, same height. In fact, you remember this, our Lake Superior will be at a greater height. Then uske baad, there will be Lake Michigan. Uske baad, there will be Lake Huron, Erie and Ontario. So this is how the location of the Great Lakes is. So, This is how the location of the Great Lakes is. So, when the water passes from, there is one river which passes through the Great Lakes region. And what is the name of a river? Look in the atlas and tell me. The most important river of the Great Lakes region is the St. Lawrence River. The St. Lawrence River is an important river of the Great Lakes region. And in fact, you can see the this region, the Great Lakes region is surrounded by so many industrial towns. So much, in the, so many industrial towns that the St. Lawrence River is one of the most important economic waterway of USA. So it is an important river, not just because, just that it is the largest or yeah, biggest river, it is a small tiny river. But why are we studying? because it is an important waterway of North America.
you see this is the industrially most developed region of north america many industrial towns such as detroit chicago milwaukee gary pittsburgh etc are located in this region so industrially the so high is the technical development that is if a ship carries a load from this region it goes to this great lakes niche se a bridge will come take the ship to the next great lake then it will put the ship into the next great lake next great lake and ultimately in which ocean it will put pacific or atlantic ocean st lawrence river where does it go it goes into the atlantic ocean flows into the atlantic ocean it flows into the atlantic ocean now the st lawrence river see the importance of a st lawrence river st lawrence river see this importance of the major river that is the st lawrence river most of the industrial developed town here the from here the st lawrence river will carry into the atlantic ocean from atlantic ocean to another one of the most industrialized developed or most developed region of the world that is the northwestern europe from northwestern europe it will go to the north sea and then from rotterdam here in europe it will enter the rivers of europe from the rotterdam region of europe it will enter the rivers of europe and from that rivers of europe into the mediterranean sea from the mediterranean sea into the suez canal and suez canal say then in asia so remember in fact this north atlantic this ocean is north atlantic this ocean is the north atlantic usa europe it is the most busiest and economically the most important sea route in the world it is the most busiest sea route in the world the most busiest sea route in the world so two questions here which river flows through the great lakes region st lawrence river where does it drain into it drains into the atlantic ocean now the which is the most busiest sea route in the world around the uh, in the north atlantic region in the pacific region in the which is the most busiest sea route in the world the north atlantic region the pacific region or the sur region surrounding singapore that is the indian ocean region so you have an answer it is the north atlantic region is the most busiest one developed market to another developed market obviously economically most the, these are the two superpowers and therefore this is the most busiest sea route in the world now oh, not only this thing not only this thing as you have seen the the sand the the great lakes region is at a different elevation so there are numerous rapids numerous waterfalls in the great lakes region and when i say the waterfalls of the great lakes region or when i say about the waterfall which waterfall comes to your mind it is the niagara falls it is the no doubt it it will be niagara falls unless so because generally everyone dreams of going to the niagara falls i want to ask you between 
to which lakes is the famous Niagara Falls located? With, on the Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. Remember, the Niagara Falls are located between the Erie and Ontario. Niagara Falls are located between the Erie and Ontario. And this area is, if it is, this is one of the largest waterfalls in the world by volume. If, in fact, you remember, this area is also has a well-developed canal system and this area is known as a wellland canal. Again, if you can remember wellland canal system, what, what kind of a canal? For the St. Lawrence waterway, the ships are taken through canals. There are shipping canals which have been built. So, the wellland canal. But remember, the Niagara Falls between which? Erie and Ontario. So, repeat with me. Niagara between Erie and Ontario. Niagara Falls are between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. So, similarly, between Lake Superior and Lake Huron, there is a Sioux Canal. There is a Sioux Canal between Superior and Huron. There is a Sioux Canal between the Lake Superior and Lake Huron. Superior pe Sioux Canal. This is what you remember. So, Sioux Canal is between Superior and Huron. Niagara is between Erie and Ontario. Erie and Ontario. Now, one more thing you should remember is this Great Lakes region is, does not lie between only in North America, only in USA. This Great Lakes region is surrounded by both is lie between in both USA and Canada. And if you remember what the why I have drawn, drawn a black line in the previous thing is this is the border between USA and Canada. This is the border between USA and Canada. North may North may there is a Canada and South may there is USA. South may there is USA. So this is the boundary line between USA and Canada. Now, one thing I want to ask you, which out of the five great lakes, out of the great lakes, which lake lies totally in USA? It does not lie in Canada. You can see from the diagram that Superior is between USA and Canada, Huron is between USA and Canada, Erie is between USA and Canada, Ontario is between USA and Canada, but Lake Michigan lies only in USA. So, Lake Michigan lies totally in USA. Lake Michigan lies totally in the USA. So, Great Lakes region, the it is a region of huge hydroelectric power project, can we say? Yes. You say that if why, such a huge volume of water is falls down from the Niagara Falls, such a huge volume of water is present in this region. So, obviously, this is a region of high hydroelectric power. So, you remember the Great Lakes region are produce cheap hydroelectricity. Cheap hydroelectric power. The Great Lakes region produce cheap hydroelectric power.
remember this produce cheap hydroelectric power also surrounding the great lakes region you can see is the canadian shield area is the labrador is the labrador and the laurentian plateau region is the lake superior region this lake superior region this region are surrounding the lake superior is rich in iron ore rich in iron ore so it is rich in the iron ore you are getting iron ore we are getting cheap hydroelectric power so no doubt iron ore is present cheap hp is present so no doubt this great lakes region is one of the most industrially developed region of usa so no doubt it is one of the most industrially developed region of usa so the great lakes region is one of the most industrially developed region of us us and canada and therefore because it is one of the most industrially developed region of usa and canada there are some of the important cities important towns which are located and because the important towns are located upsc generally will ask you question what are the important towns which are located in the great lakes region so this is the physical map then come here to the political map and we will do only some of the important towns one of the important towns now one of the most important town which is not located on the great lakes but it is very far in the great lakes far away from the great lakes but in the great lakes region is the pittsburgh the pittsburgh can you find the pittsburgh region pittsburgh it was where the first steel was produced in the world and even today it is the iron and steel capital of the world so pittsburgh you remember is the iron and steel capital of the world and iron and steel industry is the backbone of any industry iron and steel industry will attract ancillary subsidiary industries iron and steel industry hai to baju mein hi there will be automobile industry after the automobile industry will come there will be tire industry coming once the tire industry comes paint industry varnish industry may come leather industry seat industry may come audio industry will come testing or small equipment industry will come machinery and tool industry will come the small nut bolt industry may come bearing industry may come square part industry may come so this is how the industrial development of a region takes place one big industry if it comes to the an area the surrounding area becomes industrially developed that is what we call as an inertia or the attracting power of a region therefore generally when we say industrial development should should be done in the poor or the backward regions but backward region because it does not have a strong industries generally do not attract the other industries and they they get they the vicious cycle of remaining backward and no industrialization remains in that area on other hand in the cities like mumbai one basic industry the surrounding industry becomes surrounding region also becomes industrial this applies to the city this applies to the state this applies to the nation this applies to the region so this is the industrially rich region pittsburgh but some of the important cities which are located on the on the different lakes is on the lake superior on the lake superior we have the city of dalath we have the city of dalath the most important from the upsc point of view we have on the city on lake michigan on lake michigan we have the cities of chicago we have the city of chicago 
what is the importance of a chicago the largest railway junction in the world center for railway industry it is an important railway junction locomotive industry here then it is a important center for food processing industry meat packaging industry so it is located on which lake it is located on lake michigan can you look see in the atlas chicago where it is located you will find in the atlas it will it is located somewhere here on the lake michigan then we have um, another important iron and steel center that is the gary gary is important for iron and steel industry and we have another important center which is for wheat industry which is for which is for milk industry the name itself says it is milwaukee milwaukee remember ye lal color mein isliye i have written it in the red color because in case if you don't want to remember superior it is fine but do not forget this three cities which are located on lake michigan do not forget this three cities which are located on lake michigan again i am repeating that is why this is the most important so repeat with me chicago on lake michigan cm in the lakes you remember cm a shortcut chief minister chicago michigan gary he was a cm so gary chicago michigan milk drinking gary was cm so mil mil rocky gary chicago on or or all are on lake michigan locomotive railway junction food processing industry iron and steel food processing dairy farming industry dairy industry mil wauki rhymes with milk so dairy industry in the mil wauki region then the third then the third important town here is the third important lake here is lake erie lake erie and yahan pe also very important from the exam point of view is the major center of on the lake erie the major center on the lake erie is detroit is detroit now tell me why is the detroit famous especially boys especially automobile lovers the detroit is the automobile capital of the world it is famous for automobile industry so detroit is the automobile capital of the world famous for automobile industry automobile capital automobile industry which is the famous car company from usa ford motors ford motors is the famous car company from usa so detroit remember is the ford motors detroit ford motors famous car company from usa automobile industry so and if i ask you which is the detroit of india detroit of india matlab the name says which city in india is famous for automobiles if i ask you which important which city is the detroit of india and if i give you option of one gurgaon if i give you second option of pune if i give you the third option of chennai which city is the detroit of india if i ask you which is the city which is known as a detroit of india why i am asking you this it is because gurgaon mein what is there maruti suzuki limited is in gurgaon 
Pune mein you have Tata Motors, you have Bajaj, you have surrounding the Pune in Mumbai you have Mahindra Motors. Pune you have Mercedes Benz, Pune ke paas you have Audi, Skoda is in Aurangabad region. So Kinetic is in Pune. But the detrite of India is neither Pune nor Gurgaon. It is the Chennai which is known as a detrite of India. The major company in Chennai is the TV is the TVS Motors and Hyundai, Honda, etc. are in Chennai. So Detroit of India is Chennai. Detroit of India is the Chennai region. Detroit of India is Chennai. And lastly, one of the larger cities on Ontario, Lake Ontario, pe, the larger cities is on Lake Ontario. Larger cities is, is the Toronto. Is Toronto. Toronto region. So Toronto is the one of the larger cities on Lake Ontario. So this is all about the Great Lakes region. This is all about this part of North America. So revive the Great Lakes region. We will continue with the central lowlands and come to the prairie grassland. And I won't divide this into physical or Political, we will try to do only things which are important for preliminary examination. So, till the time we meet again, thank you very much.